All right, welcome everybody to the Synapse Philosophy Group. I am Haig John, and we are on D.D. Dee Dee Palmer's 1910, his book, The Chiropractor. And this has been the most controversial book and uh, for one chapter, and it's the moral and religious duty of, chiro of the chiropractor. We've reviewed it before, and uh, it's time to do it again. We've also translated this book into Portuguese and to Spanish, and we're working on getting it out to uh, our brothers and sisters over our borders because it's so important. And uh, this book has inspired me in so many ways. That's why we keep going back to it. Because each time I read it, I read it with new eyes. Each time I hear it, I hear it with new ears. And, you know, I, I like hearing it. <laughs> and, uh, our, our man with the plan, Alan, is going to do the, some reading tonight. And just to go through some ground rules. You know, everybody is open to speak. Uh, Pasquale Sarasoli, he was my mentor. And, you know, he taught us three minutes to speak, two minutes up to answer, uh, up to two minutes to answer up to three questions. But let's be brief on what we have to say. Let's get our point across and keep it chiropractic, okay? And this is training for us to get our our vocabulary together, to get our points um, together, and be able to express ourselves. But we're going to really get into some nitty-gritty here with D.D. Palmer. And uh, I love this chapter. I love this whole book, and I'm excited to start. So, Alan, why don't we have you rocking for us and start reading, please? Excellent. All right, we're going to start the chiropractor. And the first chapter is the moral and religious duty of a chiropractor. The following has been sharply criticized by a few chiropractors, but not as severely, nor by as many as was my announcement of the moving of joints by hand. A part of this criticism was based upon rival jealousy, the balance because of wrong impressions. That which was on account of lack of information discontinued as soon as the word the word the would-be critics were well informed. I have received greater applause at the close of the following lecture from my classes than any other. Every important characteristic ch chiropractic idea that I have advanced has been bitterly assailed. Yet, although somewhat discouraged at times, I have not turned from that which I knew was correct. The Constitution of the United States declares that, quote, Congress shall make no law respecting an established religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, unquote. The great state of California has granted the same privilege in its medical act by declaring in section 17, quote, nor shall this act be construed as to discriminate against the practice of religion, unquote. It was quite mindful and generous of those who framed the California Medical Act to coincide with the Constitution of the United States in not allowing the Medical Act to conflict with the Constitution of the United States, nor interfere with the religious duty of chiropractors, a privilege already conferred upon them. It now becomes, it now becomes us as chiropractors to assert our religious rights. Hold on one second. Let's pause. Okay. So what's DD doing here? He's really setting the stage for us, right? Now he says that last little line is where people get hung up a lot about to assert our religious rights. And, you know, he goes on to say later, I'm not trying to make this religion, but, you know, he wouldn't restrict a religion from expressing themselves. That's why he quotes law here. How do you guys feel up to this point? Barry, great to see you, my friend. Glad you're back. So you can see how Dee Dee's setting the stage for us right now. Barry, we're in 1914. Um, we're right at the beginning, page one. Okay? All right. Senor Allen, you want to continue? You got it. There could be no religion without science and philosophy, period. <laughs> Other states than California, in their laws to regulate the practice of medicine, have been mindful of religious conscience. Kansas, quote, nothing in this act shall be construed as interfering with any religious beliefs in the treatment of disease, unquote. Virginia, quote, this act does not interfere in any way with the practice of religion, unquote. 
Washington, but this act does not apply to nor interfere in any way with the practice of religion, unquote. Illinois, quote, nothing in this act applies to any person who administers to or treats the sick or suffering by mental or spiritual means without the use of any drug or material remedy, unquote. The new law of 1913 in the state of California says, quote, nor shall this act be construed so as to discriminate against the practice of religion, unquote. Chiropractic is a science and an art. The philosophy of chiropractic consists of the reasons given for the principles which compose the science and the movements which have to do with the art. Science is accepted, accumulated knowledge, systematized and formulated with reference to the existence of general facts. The operation of general laws concerning one subject. Chiropractic is the name of a classified, indexed knowledge of successive sense impressions of biology, the science of life, which science I created out of the principles which have existed as long as the vertebra. Let's pause right there. I mean, you could feel it. Like it's like a train just getting start, just getting going, right? Didi is just yeah. getting his, his juices moving. You guys get anything out of that? You want some enlightenment? Alan, you paused back here at a section. Uh oh, oh let's see. We've got we might have some more people coming in. What'd you guys get out of that? Any discussion on that, or should we keep moving? Uh, God, it's, there's a lot there, but it, it it seems pretty clear. It's and it's, it's cool. he's establishing. You know, he says. You know that he talks about you know, chiropractic as a science and an art, and a philosophy. The philosophy of chiropractic consists of the reasons given for the principles which compose the science, and the movements which have to do with the art. And now he's going into the details of what the science and the and the art are um and that's the and, beginning of this that's what we're doing a little bit of this stuff he's he's setting the tone basically yeah then we get to some deep philosophical dd i mean he starts getting into it soon let's just get there so uh so we're on page two here science is the knowledge of knowing Scient scientific religion embraces a systematic knowledge of facts, which can be verified by, I'm sorry, I did something to my computer here. Let me get back. No problem. Uh, there we go. Uh, scientific religion embraces the, science, the, the systematic knowledge of facts, which can be verified by conscious cerebration. Knowledge is superior to faith and belief. Faith is an inward acceptance of some personal act. We, we believe Don is trustworthy, therefore we have faith. Faith is a union of belief and trust. Belief is an intellectual process. The acceptance of something as true on other grounds than per personal observation and experience. Faith implies a trust in a person. We may believe. In a, in a proposition in which no person is implied or thought of. Knowledge is knowing. We know from personal evidence. That which may be evidence to you may not be to me. That which we may accept as evidence today may not appeal to us as, as such tomorrow. Our belief, faith, and knowledge depend on our education. Our education depends on our environment. Art relates to something to be done. Chiropractic art consists of the aptitude for adjusting displaced vertebra, of which art I am the originator. Let's pause there just a moment. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Segway. And, you know, as I am the originator of the art, everything has come from Dee Dee, and we have to acknowledge that. And I think that's a lot has been forgotten. That we, you know, we want B, BJ did a tremendous amount of work, but it still all started with DG, DD, excuse me, DD. 
Well, I think part of the reason he's 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 making sure this is said this way is is because of uh, BJ was such a promoter and and was make and and sounded as if he was a creator when in reality you know, and Dee Dee's saying, "Hey, me, I'm the re I'm the one that did this." So, so you know, he may be doing stuff, but I'm the one that brought it all about. And these are what, and this is my basis for what I did. And you know, that's what we call them the father of chiropractic. I mean, that's he is the fountainhead, right? And Correct. you know, this the next section. Let's go into that one, the chiropractic philosophy. One of my favorites. Chiropractic philosophy is the knowledge of the phenomena of life as explained by the understanding of the principles of the science and art. In in my work on science, art, and philosophy of chiropractic, I have given an extensive explanation of the laws of life and the nature of disease. The practice of chiropractic includes a moral obligation and a religious duty. To comprehend these responsibilities, is an absolutely it is absolutely necessary that the chiropractor should be able to understand and define chiropractic science. He must know not only the basic principle upon which it is founded, and the constitutional parts of which parts which form its scientific structure, but also the philosophy of the science and art of the vertebral adjusting. Now, to absorb and digest these all important and essential ideas and make them a part of one's very being requires a close study of the chiropractor's adjuster. I think that is a very important point. That's why we're rereading this again and how important this is. And what Dee is doing is saying, you, this is your duty. It's your duty to humanity. It's serving the God within every human being, God's expression of life. And, uh, you know, it's, it's your mission, setting up our mission. I love it. That's why, you know, it's, we have to have the triune, the, the philosophy, the art, and the science. And that's what he's going into next. Ready for me to go on? Yeah. Chiropractic deals with biology. It is the only comprehensive system which answers the, the time-worn question, what is life? Scientific chiropractors are versed in the principles of chiropractic. They live according to its rules. They philosophize on the art of relieving abnormal conditions by adjusting displaced bones. As educated intelligences, they relieve undue pressure on nerves in order that innate may transmit and receive impulses to and from the various parts of the body in normal manner. They desire to understand the nature of our physical existence and assign natural causes for both normal and abnormal functions. As a science, chiropractic explains local and general death, but uh, to be but the result of law, a step on the road of eternal progression that any de deviation from tone, the basis of chiropractic is disease. Now that's I think that's a stop place. <laughs> that's a stop place. A, a, th those two paragraphs are just so weighty in, in there. You know, it talks about you know, that we're talking about what we do is scientific and that educated chiropractors understand what they're doing on an educated level, but they're allowing in, they do what they do to allow innate to do her job. That they, so that innate may transmit the receive and receive impulses to and from the various parts of the body in a normal manner. And that any deviation from tone, which is innate trans receiving and transmitting impulses is the basis of chiropractic is the, the base. That's the basis of chiropractic. And that is disease, disease. Is, the, is the absence of tone. That's it. That's it. I mean, He's setting the stage right now, and that is, you know, a subluxation. Anything besides that is, in reality, something else. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna say, I really think that um, he's orchestrating 
our triune, our science, our philosophy, and our art, and our art here. And I really like how, like Alan was saying with his wordplay here, he says the scientific chiropractor philosophizes on the art to release the pressure of the nerves. Like so, the scientific chiropractor knows what they're doing. They're stern, yet they are still sitting there in their clinic philosophizing, looking at their own art, looking at their peers' art and saying, okay, what can we do to make this more efficient and better? And yet at the beginning, a couple of sentences before that, he talks about chiropractic philosophy is the knowledge of the phenomena of life. Right there is a perfect quote, but then he goes on, I believe it says, expressed by the science and the art. And he's really orchestrating these three as they are harmonious. They don't need to be uh, individual. They don't need to be in a group. Um, that, you know, these are all three. These are us. And we should emulate him and listen to him, especially in these defining definitions and philosophy and terms here, and, and, be, and be this way, practice this way. But he, we should, since we're breaking this down, we need to make sure that we look back two paragraphs because he tells us before he talks about scientific chiropractors, he says, science is the knowledge of knowing. Scientific religion embraces a systematic knowledge of facts which can be verified by conscious cerebration. Knowledge is superior to faith and belief. So that he's saying you got to know that you know that you know. <laughs> so I, and so thank you for saying that again. So I love this because I looked at my notes, so it's been a while. And, I, and looking through my notes over the past few months, I see all these random words. And I was like, oh, DD used those words. I had to look them up. And it seems like I have to do this more with DD than BJ. And you just said conscious cerebration. So I had to look up cerebration. I'm like, oh, that sounds like celebration. The working of the brain thinking. So yes, thank you, Alan. Cerebration, cerebellar, right? Yep. Cerebration. Yeah. I mean, you know, when we're talking about, I mean, he's just laying it out. Absolutely. Conscious cerebration. And it's not that you just take it on faith, all right, it works. But, you know, he's talking about the chiropractor is actively thinking and philosophizing his entire time as a chiropractor, thinking through each thing, thinking about the magic and the amazingness of life itself. Should we keep going? Well, I, I just want to just want to think for a second here, because it's not something that often gets mentioned, that it's and it's something that that is was different in the relationship of the world and the way people dealt with this particular topic in, in the early 1900s. And he says, as scientific as science chiropractic as a science chiropractic explains local and general death to be but the result of law, a step on the road of eternal progression that any deviation from tone, the basis of chiropractic is disease. And, you know, we live separated from death in our world. In the, ninth, in, the, in the late 1800s, in the 19th and early 20th century, people, you know, lots of kids died. People had five, six, seven kids because two and three or four of them are gonna die. You know, they had a different attitude about it. People would lay people out on the dining room table and have a wake. You know, they lived with death and expected death and, and, and dealt with it in a different way. And he's saying it's just part of, and, and, and it is, it's just part of the natural progression of things. We become alienated from it and afraid of it because we've separated from the reality that it's, it, that nothing is permanent. You know, they talk about that the, that the constant, the, 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 the Milky Way is going to collide with the Andromeda galaxy in a couple of billion years. That, bring us back to chiropractic. I mean, how do you yeah, know, but I'm just saying it's, it's right nothing. It's everything is impermanent and death is just a part of life. And he's yeah. saying that here, he says, it's just part of the progression. And then when there, and that it's a deviation from tone, the basis of chiropractic is disease. Now, are we talking about the really the progression of life or the progression of spirit? Because the next page is really where he gets into that. He's not talking about the progression of life. He's talking about oh, the no. progression of your spirituality and the connection from your earthly spirit of innate to God. And he's going to get into that. The earthly part is just a blip. All that's just the little stuff. And that's, you know, getting caught up on just the death part. 
you know, he's really, you know, he talks about opening the veil, the veil of ignorance to what's on the other side, right on the next page. So, uh, you know, I think just getting I'm ready to go spiritual consciousness of D.D. Palmer. This is about the best place we can do it. Now, go ahead. Let's start. As a philosophy, it is the science of all sciences. It deals with the subjective ethical religion, the science which treats of the existence, character, and attributes of God, the all-pervading universal intelligence. Now let's stop there, okay? We have to do this one in smaller blips in this book, okay? Because what did he just say right there? That is, as a philosophy, it is the science of all sciences, chiropractic, okay? And then the philosophy is the science of sciences. It deals with the, with the subjective ethical religion, the science which treats of, ex, with, which treats of existence, character, and a, uh, attributes of God. I mean, there is a lot in that sentence that D.D. is saying, this is what chiropractic is, you know? Uh, as a philosophy, it is the science of sciences. It's bigger than what we can even consciously think of because the philosophy is even bigger than our little educated brain because he's talking about educated there. Our educated brain can't even understand it. It's that much bigger than science. And then he says it deals with the subjective ethical religion, the science which treats uh, of the existence, character, and attributes of God the all-pervading universal intelligence. I mean, he's saying this is the only si only philosophy of the day where we brought all those th these things together. I just, I, you know, I think now he's just getting his, he's getting lubed up, getting, you know, really rolling here. I like it. Well, and then, and, 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 you know, what was it, 27, 20, 13 years later is when Stevenson wrote down as the, as the, pro as the, major premise universal intelligence exactly <laughs> and you know when people say us oh, go ahead go ahead barry no in the in that sentence you know what sticks out to me besides the depth of it is one word treats yeah. the science treats i the use of that word it sticks out that he used that now you know that i would look up too because i think it's a different term concept. use of the terminology there it, yeah, it's not on the medical side. It's on the application side. Yeah, as in a treatment. The science treats, what did, what did he say? Treats of the existence. So it's a, it, the, the definition was probably different. That's a different definition of the term than what we, we commonly use today. Yeah. 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 It's a good call because it's so hard to read that word sometimes. It drives me a little crazy. <laughs> All right, should we go on from there? Look, okay. it's possibilities. I, well, I just sorry. want to acknowledge Jesus. I want you, I, I, I'm excited to see a, you know, a new name on here. And uh, I'm glad you join us, Jesus. Thank you. All right, go ahead, Alan. Just, well, you had the break there. I thought I'd quickly look up and see. I'll go back to that later. Um, it's, poss it's, it's possibilities will become unlimited when his laws and our duties as a segmented personified portion thereof are scientifically understood. Okay, it's worth another little- It will lessen- I mean- well, Let me read the next sentence and, 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 and with that, I think. It will lessen disease, poverty, and crime, empty our jails, penitentiaries, and insane asylums, and assist us to prepare for the existence beyond the transition called death. You know, he's setting up us as chiropractors. Your duty is so large. You know, we're talking about through the afterlife and serving a higher power. You know, thank you for reading the rest of that. You're absolutely right. I have that in brackets on, you know, all my notes on my book. What about you guys? You get any, you know, you want to continue? Have any insights there? Huh. I'm ready to go. Go ahead. Uh, 
It explains why all persons are not equal mentally and physically, or if born alike, why some become superior or inferior to others similarly situated. Why certain individuals are not able to express themselves as intelligently as others. Why some persons are not mentally and physically alike at all times. To make clear this difference, I will give a case and its termination under chiropractic adjusting. Uh, ED is, a, is an abbreviation um, there. I'm not exactly sure what that is there for, but uh, seven, I don't think it's a name, but it might be. 17 years of age, was hem hemiplegic in left half of his body since birth. It had not uttered a, he had not uttered a word uh, that was understood by his parents or friends. Mentally, he was a, that of a child three years of age. Six weeks of chiropractic adjusting caused the distortion, the distorted sixth dorsal articulation to become normal in shape and to occupy its normal position, releasing a stretched condition on the sixth pair of dorsal nerves, creating a normal tension of nerves and muscles. The usual force of imp to impulses arousing the normal amount of energy, consequently, the normal expression of ideas. In six weeks, Ed's mentality and language was that of others of like age and environments. Conation, paren, desire and volition, close paren, uh, was equal to those of cognition and feeling. He became subject to the law of duty, capable of acting through his moral sense of right. He was a moral agent. He was alike formed of moral, I'm sorry, he was alike intellectual in each of the three great divisions of the mind. I had performed a moral duty as well as a religious duty. It points out uh, the conditions upon which both health and disease depend. It explains why and how one person becomes affected with disease while his association or neighbor apparently living under the same conditions remains well. Furthermore, it makes plain the reason why one or more of the bodily functions are performed in an excessive or in a deficient degree of frequency or intensity, either of which condition is a form of disease. You have some insights, Alan? Do you want to express something? No, I just thought it was a long run there. I just see if anybody had something they wanted to say on that. You know, it's from this point on is when he's getting to a little bit more. And right after this next paragraph, it's a short one. Let's just pause there too, okay? Sure. When educated and innate intelligence intelligences are able to converse with each other, a possibility which, uh, which not a very distant future may disclose, we shall be able to make a correct diagnosis. How heretofore these two intelligences have misunderstood each other concerning the laws which govern life. When the science of biology is correctly understood, the span of life will be more than double. So, you know, he's talking, <laughs> he's talking about bridging educated to innate, you know, spiritual to material and uh, becoming one. What'd you guys get out of that? Yeah, I, I it, this bigness, this reminds me of like, seriously, the bigness of the fellow within that his son BJ talks about. Uh, Didi is going to, you know, if you know of somebody who, it, why one succeeds and the other one doesn't, why one's smart and why one's not, it, 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 this is what it has to do with. This is like your answers to life. And we all search for the answers. Why is this person successful? Why this, why that? Dee cuts it right down to the basics of humanity here, right down to the basics, yet it's profound. It, yet it's profound. I mean, and he's saying it really in a, in, a, in a paragraph. I mean, it's amazing to me how he's so concise in a way. And, uh, you know, I'm waiting for this day. When does that happen? What needs to be done? Is it the right adjustment? or there are as many generations that need to be adjusted or subluxations cleared, you know, because yet, as of yet, he has not mentioned a subluxation yet. 
Is he talking about subluxation there or the lack thereof? Or is he talking about enlightenment? He, he's talking about connection through through a work. He, he may not have he's may not be using the term subluxation, but he's talking about getting the patients reconnected. Yeah, absolutely. You know, without saying it, that's what he's saying. This is what we're doing is connecting them through the, uh, you know, through the adjustment, this spirit realm. Heretofore, these two difference have, differences have misunderstood each other concerning the laws which govern life. You know, and where does it, how does educated get so messed up? How do we forget the laws that govern life in our educated world? And you, and you know, he talks about here too, how, how these two connect and what happens. And he gave the case study at the beginning of what happens when it doesn't with that 17 year old. But us three, we've witnessed this throughout our practices, through our clients or patients, whatever you want to call them, practice members. People, people become better people when they are under adjustments, uh, morally or religious, like Dee Dee would say, they, they improve in those areas. Um, they're, they, they just improve. They may come in with neck pain or carpal tunnel or sciatica. However, with a few adjustments, sometimes on, their, their attitude, their outlook can completely change. And this is what we're doing. We're, we're reconnecting innate to their educated brain, which is basically a body part. Where we're allowing the innate, we're allowing the more open flow of the force from innate through to educated and, and allowing that connection, that proper connection to occur. Correct. Correct. This way, we're removing the barriers. We're removing the yeah. barriers, just becoming one instead of having to come through the filters, right? It's filter after filter of everything we've learned from another man or woman since our, our conception. And uh, what he's really talking about is removing these filters and becoming more authentic is what I see it. And in a way, Jake, you're going to learn this weekend, that's what really innate adjusting is all about, is really adjusting from our authentic self, being who we truly are and expressing through that. And then we're able to communicate innate to innate more clearly and getting the educated out of the way without second, the second guessing is really the educated. The first idea, really, that first inkling or first intuition is where spirit comes in or innate is. So uh, that's what I got out of that sentence. I, I, I absolutely, you know, this is where Didi's truly so showing us, this is where we're going, guys. This is how important it is. This is our duty to go out and serve these people. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I'm grateful. And just, Barry, what you were just talking about, you know, when I'm subluxated, yeah, I am grouchy. I am just my temper's quick. Um, and I have been that way this week. And I called my buddy. I said, man, I've been jumping at people. I am not who I'm supposed to be. I need to get adjusted. He's like, I'm on my way over. And uh, thank God we have chiropractor friends in our lives, right? That know how important that is. But, uh, you know, when you said that, I, I, I think of myself. Absolutely. I've been there. Mm -hmm. Joyce, I'm so happy you're joining us. I'm glad you're here. We're on D.D. Palmer's 1910, page three. And if you don't have it, it's public domain. I'll send you an email with uh, the PDF, okay? And anybody else, hey, Seuss, I don't know if you're here, but we've also uh, translated into Spanish and Portuguese. So uh, we have this book in multiple languages. We're going to do French. Maybe we could do Japanese. I'm going to try that one. <laughs> All right. Should we continue? And I think after this one, we stop. Okay. Because this is not really, we need to digest some of this stuff from Dee Dee Palmer. This next paragraph is a short one, but there's a lot in it. Okay. And I don't want to just zoom through this because there's so much to digest. Okay. Go ahead, Alan. Chiropractic has pulled aside the curtain of ignorance which obscured the cause of disease. In time, it will lift the veil of superstition, which has obstructed our vision of the great beyond. In time, spiritual existence will be as well known and comprehended as that of the physical world. Well, I mean, you don't say that just in passing, right? <laughs> sure I can. <laughs> sure you can. Absolutely. 
I mean, we can because, you know, we're chiropractors and this is what we study. You know, we could study the physical nature of, I mean, Jake, and I know Joyce, you're in school, biochemistry, you're st- you're the, the mechanical nature of what our little educated brains can understand to break down our nutrients and things and make it into this living body. The complications are far beyond the sciences of science. It's bigger than that, right? And this is where he's saying we're pulling aside the veil of ignorance. We're gonna we're gonna have a greater consciousness of our spirituality. Chiropractic's time is right now in this world. What do you guys feel? It's it, it not it, I don't want to denigrate the 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 knowledge that you, the the scientific knowledge that you're learning in school. You know, it's and it's all integral. And he talked about that before. Science is the knowledge of knowing, and it gives you the 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 physio- physiology of of how it all works. But you also have to be aware of the spirituality of how it all works. The the power of the 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 piece of the of universal that's in us as innate, and that and that's the has all the knowledge. And if we can live through it and with it, it allows us to function better as chiropractors uh, which is what you teach in your seminar yeah you know what Go ahead. any textbook is is the the research is at least seven to 14 years out of date so no matter what we're learning in a textbook besides chiropractic philosophy barry were you going to say something i cut you off yeah yeah exactly like what alan was saying you know uh, dd is writing this and this is 40 This is him being 40 some years old, I believe, and and a couple of decades of magnetic healing and now finding and doing the art of chiropractic going on now two decades. So he's having it just as much as the magnetic healing. And he truly said, we're lifting the veil off of disease. And literally he's, he's acknowledging there in that last sentence that chiropractic is the avenue to touch the spirit, the physical and the spirit. If you want to touch the spirit, this is the avenue. Getting us closer to God instead of farther away. You know, the world out there wants to make it. We've industrialized life. Oh, we can, we understand that. We understand digestion. We understand how they make a cell. No, we don't. We don't really understand those things. We have theories, but, you know, we also have to give this respect to the, the amazingness of uh of spirit and we're getting closer to that with this wonderful thing we have chiropractic called chiropractic alan do you have something i I just think that the next paragraph ties in with exactly what we're talking about here okay yeah it does so chiropractic science includes biology the science of life in this world and in the recognition of the spiritual existence in the next the principles compose it are substantive in their independence and incentive to human and spiritual progress. They originate in divinity, the universal intelligence, and constitute the essential qualities of life, which, having begun in this world, are never ending. Now, I'm going to mark this because we're going to start at the beginning of that paragraph next time because it is so important. Oh, yeah. And uh, it's, you know, I mean, we can we can have a whole discussion on this. I have most of the next two pages underlined and highlighted. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's why we're going to start there next time, but that's okay. We're going to do it again anyway. But, but I think that that ties in exa- with exactly what we were just saying. That's one. That's why I wanted to read it here as well. It absolutely does. What are your insights on that then? They well, it's like we were saying. Science science includes the biology. But it also in in is rec- it also has re- it also recognizes the spiritual component th- and the spiritual existence, of it, which is continuous. It's you know, we all, we've we've talked on this and often about innate being like a drop of water, you know, an analogous to a drop of water. It's in us as the drop of water, and then when we pass. When we transition out of this body, it goes back to the ocean of universal. Yeah, that's it. Uh, yeah, I love that analogy. And, uh, you know, it's all one, yet it's a piece of the whole. Absolutely. You know, 
there is a lot here and you know just getting this beginning there's momentum and some of these you know we're going to have discussions on this um that are really really necessary from this book because this is where people get a lot of hang-ups where you know dd was trying to make a religion and all those different things he clarifies it all for us in here when you get into those discussions with people or what have you especially as a student um we did this with uh you know, a long time, probably two and a half years ago, we did this last time, and maybe three years ago. And, uh, you know, we had some students that got hung up a little bit on, uh, you know, uh, Atkinson and getting the, the intuition where a lot of people say, you know, DD got this from a ghost or give from different things like that, where that's just untrue. He said, I got an inspiration just like you would say anything else. So he clarifies these things and we have less speculation of what Dee said. And well, you know, sometimes I, I think that, you know, we, it, there are, when I, 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 when I meditate every day, I'll get impressions. And sometimes they appear to come from people that I know or don't know, you know or mo mostly from people that I know but I get an, an impression and it isn't necessarily something that they ever said or did to me, but it's something I needed to know. And I think it's the same kind of thing here that, you know, he, he got an impression. He was, you know, innate was speaking through a medium that he could relate to. Yeah. Potentially. I mean, it's just like praying for something and realizing you received it. Oh, wow. Fantastic. You know, you, <laughs> that's wonderful. That's the way it's supposed to be. Right. Well, we had an amazing night, okay? We're back. We took, what is that, three weeks or a month off? And I got a chance to regroup and get ready to come and hang out with Jake really soon. He's picking me up from the airport. I'm excited. You have all my info, right? Okay. <laughs> and then we're going to jam Friday night in Kansas City. And then we're going to all day, we're going to have uh, a Nate adjusting in Kansas City. And Joyce, it was good seeing you today and good talking to you. Hi there. I'm glad you could join Hi. us. Yeah, for a little bit. Sorry, I was late. I just came out from clinic. Good to see oh, y'all. Right. Got to get through clinic. <laughs> well, I'm glad you could join us. That's why we put this on YouTube. Last month, we had 1,500 or something like that minutes watched of this podcast. I mean, that's incredible, really, for a chiropractic philosophy podcast. But it's people and students from all around the world at their own time zones. And I know in California, it's not easy to get here. And uh, so people listen to it, you know, on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. So it's cool, you know, and then going back and listen to some old ones. I'm saying old. That was all poignant philosophy from BJ and D.D. Palmer. But, uh, you know, I'll see you soon for Nate adjusting, Jake. And you guys, I'll see you next Tuesday. Okay. Excellent. And we're going to pick up it, that last paragraph that you read, because I want to hear it again. Yeah. I'd like to print it out and probably post it around my office. <laughs> but, uh, so have a beautiful night, everybody. Anybody else have anything to share? All right. I've been doing this with kids all day. All done. All done. This is, you know, when you're adjusting kids, all done. <laughs> I it's also that's so also much. that's also applause in in uh, in in American Sign. Is that right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs>